<laughs> it was showing me, not you. <laughs> wow. You have your headset on? Yeah. What's what a uh... fiasco. Yeah. That was kind of interesting. This is, uh, okay. We are live, it says. Wow, Facebook has, uh, got us all messed up. Yeah, they, uh, updated our page. Updated our page. Okay, we got the sound. Well, they updated the page, and... We could not figure out how to get a live video going. <laughs> we're not sure we can do it again. Yeah, we stumbled into it somehow, but that was, uh, yeah, that's the second time now that they updated probably, what, a year ago, and we had trouble finding it, and now it's like they don't want you to go live or something. They want to hide it from you. As... They want to make it a reel. Yeah. So this is going to be a reel also. Oh, really? A half an hour reel? <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah. So, uh, welcome. Uh, we'll give a few minutes. We only got one person in here with us right now. We'll give a minute or two. See if anybody else pops in. Um, I'm getting all tangled up here. Hold on. We're just on the struggle bus today. Okay, so uh, our um, pre-show doesn't look like it posted, so probably nobody knows what we're talking about today, and uh, I just checked, the, the email went out, but the video for the pre-show didn't post, so I don't know what, uh, if our social media gal was having the same problems we were having, yeah, probably. and, and we could... Yeah. Right. So, uh. No comments yet. Let's see. Somebody say something. Somebody comment something so we know that's working. Please. I can comment as myself, it looks like. Well, I hope that function's working. <laughs> well, yeah, Facebook's got us all messed up. Not the first time. Nor will it probably be the last. Yeah. Every time I log in now, I get that thing that says, review your page, review your page, and I kept ignoring it and not reviewing my page. So, uh... That uh, that's probably where they were telling me how to go live. <laughs> yeah. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, we're, you know, uh, it's almost autumn, right? September twenty second starts autumn, right? Isn't that the uh, autumnal equinox? Is September twenty second, right? Right, at 22nd at midnight or something, whatever it is. But, yeah, so that's just, what, uh, about 10 days away. So autumn's almost upon us. And, in fact, around the country, uh, a lot of hunting seasons have already started. Um, I've been seeing some posts from up in Michigan. Looks like their youth firearm season has already started. And uh, out west, they're already hunting elk with uh, bow bow season for deer starts here not this weekend but the weekend after and uh yeah so various hunting seasons are starting around the country and uh we're in, over the next couple of weeks we're going to take a look at uh hunting in general and hunting with uh your ar right we've all seen the politicians uh, uh what's her name uh 
uh, Feinstein, Feinstein, I, I don't know how you pronounce that, Feinstein, Feinstein, uh, from California where, you know, you, uh, you can't hunt with your AR, so what do you need it for? Well, that's a bunch of horse stuff. <laughs> I'll keep it politically correct. Um, you absolutely can hunt with your AR. Um, but there are, uh, you know, like many things, um, they are regulated and restricted a little bit uh, as to what you can do with them, where you can do it, and, and there's some different restrictions. Um, every state has their nuances, so if you want to hunt with your AR, uh, make sure you uh, get a hunting license and get the rules and regulations book and look up what you are and aren't allowed to do as it pertains to hunting with your AR. So, um, you know, uh, start off with, uh, semi, it's a semi-automatic rifle, right? And uh, I know of at least one state, I'm not sure if there's more, that don't allow you to hunt deer or big game uh, deer, bear, that kind of stuff with a semi-automatic rifle, and that's Pennsylvania. Excuse me, our next door neighbors. You're only allowed to use uh, single single shots, bolt actions, pumps, anything that is lever actions, manually operated guns. Now, that being said, you can make this a manually operated gun by removing the gas system. And it doesn't cycle automatically. Um, you remove the gas block, weld the gas hole, and then every time you shoot, you have to charge it manually. You shoot, you charge. You shoot, you charge. Um, that's where a side charger would come in really handy because now you could, with a side charger, you don't have to, you know, kind of pull this thing away and get your face out of the way and come off of target. You can stay right here on target, shoot and charge, shoot and charge. You don't have to worry about hitting yourself in the face with the charging handle. So the side charger would come in real handy in that situation. Um, but yeah, like, uh, Pennsylvania. No, no semi-automatics for big game. Uh, I think you can use semi-automatics for varmints and uh, squirrels, small game, that kind of stuff, but uh, not for big game. And you know, it's a uh, a safety thing again. They, you know, they claim safety. Uh, you know, there can be Pennsylvania a million guys in the woods on opening day, right? It's a sea of orange, and uh, you don't want someone just flinging lead down range and you know throwing a bunch of bullets through the woods super fast and not paying attention to what they're doing so I, th I believe that is the main crux of why they have resisted the urge to go to semi-automatics for big game uh, and again there may be more states out there that don't allow that I'm not 100% sure but that is the one that I know of so as I stated in, in the beginning make sure you know your state laws uh big game is deer bear elk anything that so like turkeys, are... turkeys are not uh they're small game they're a, they're a small game animal and i'm not sure if they allow uh semi-automatic shotguns for turkey or not um in the fall season you're allowed to use rifles for turkey at least you were in pennsylvania when i was growing up i don't know if that's the same anymore yeah well i'm Still seeing myself up there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I'm, we're still live. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of knowing what, what you can and can't do. I hope it's not getting any comments. Let me see uh, if I can comment. Yeah, I commented. So, okay. Well, let's. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, magazine capacity. Uh, that's another uh, restriction that can come into play uh, when you're hunting with your AR, right? Uh, a standard magazine for an AR is. 30 rounds so uh you know uh, here in ohio we are limited to three we're only allowed to have one in the chamber two in the magazine and that doesn't matter what we're hunting with uh shotgun 
rifle. Uh, we're only allowed three rounds in our gun for big game. Again, small game. Hey, there you go, Russ. Uh, 31 years today. Well, happy anniversary, Russ. I saw the picture you posted earlier of you and your wife when you were uh, young and had your 1980s mustache. That was pretty. <laughs> So, uh, again, happy anniversary. So, uh, magazine capacity, right? Uh, here in Ohio, three rounds. Um, I've heard other states uh, limit you to five rounds. I've heard states that don't limit you at all. So, uh, you know, again, it goes back to knowing what your state law allows and uh, following that. Uh, and it, it comes down to a safety thing. Again, you know, here in Ohio, they don't want us. We're relatively flat kind of wide open land uh they don't want a guy emptying a 30 round magazine at a running deer going down through the woods and flinging lead everywhere and not paying attention to what he's doing uh that's a recipe for disaster so it's a safety uh yeah we talked about that already russ no semi-autos for big game in pa you gotta weld your weld your gas system shut or turn your gas block around somehow shut it off so that uh you know and and don't don't uh again um there's a there's a thing in the pennsylvania law russ maybe you can correct me if i'm wrong um if you're not allowed to use a semi-automatic you can turn your semi-automatic into a single shot basically but there's a little thing in there that says cannot be uh readily converted so would turning your gas block around uh render it not readily convertible right so you get a couple of allen wrenches and you know boom 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 and you're back in business again you're a semi-automatic again that's kind of a subjective uh area that leaves it up to the game warden's interpretation of is it readily convertible in the field you don't want to leave um you don't want to leave subjectivity out there when it comes to uh your rights to go hunting right you get caught with the wrong stuff they'll take your gun they'll take your hunting license and they can take your hunting privileges for years so you know uh without the gas tube on it it's good to go okay okay just yeah again it's something that you're gonna have to look into when it comes to converting a semi-automatic to a single action where you have to charge it manually every time what is you know good to go in your state or not um so magazine capacity we just talked about knowing how many rounds you can put in your gun uh caliber restrictions so um some states uh you know everybody we all see on the news and on the the tv and the different things on facebook how people talk about how powerful the ar-15 is how this this super powerful weapon that leaves you know gigantic holes in people and blows bodies apart and you know it's <laughs> you, i laugh sometimes you know because it's a it's just a glorified 22 you know <laughs> uh many states won't even let you hunt with uh a 223 or a 556 for big game right because it's not potent it's not powerful enough to humanely harvest uh, big game on a consistent basis um, you, it can be done and it has been done I guarantee it it can and has been done but they don't want to uh, take the chance uh, we hunted several years ago down in Texas and we took our AR-15s and we were hunting hogs and uh, that first year every single hog that we shot with our 5.56 five, guns ran every single one of them if you didn't hit them in the head if you hit even the ones we hit in the neck if you didn't hit them right in the noggin and put, put them down they ran and if you hit them in the shoulder i mean we had a couple that ran 50 75 80 yards i mean they ran so uh it's not a fantastic round for uh uh quick kills quick humane kills uh not an adjust we uh, the blank gas block turned around with the gas tube on a grendel okay so, um uh, 
you know, some states, uh, they have certain restrictions on the size of the caliber that you can use. Um, here in Ohio, we're allowed to use ARs. Uh, we're allowed to use semi-automatics. We are magazine restricted and we are caliber restricted. Um, we're only allowed to use straight walled ammunition, pistol caliber of 357 or greater. So like, you know, 357, 44 mag, the uh, 350 legend doesn't quite fall into that. The uh, 350 legend is 352 or 353, but they did make an exception for that caliber here in Ohio. So we are allowed to use it. Um, the 4470, the 444, there's, you know, the 50 Beowulf, there's 10 or 12 different calibers that we can use here in Ohio in our ARs to uh, hunt deer with. Um, a lot of the states out west have caliber restrictions because the animals get so much bigger when you get out west. You start talking mule deer uh, and uh, elk, that those kind of, you know, up north you get uh, caribou, you know, six, seven, eight hundred pound animals. You want to, you want a nice sturdy bullet to put that animal down and harvest it humanely. You don't want that animal running off and dying somewhere and you're not recovering it. So, uh, and, and also, um, ammo restrictions, right? A lot of States won't let you use ball ammunition for big game hunting. And by ball ammunition, we mean, you know, your standard practice round, right? Just plinking ammo, right? There's no expansion to this. It's going to go in that size and it's going to come out the other side, just about that same size. And it's not going to do a whole lot of damage in between. Is it going to kill the animal? Yeah, he's probably going to die eventually, but he's going to run, and you're going to have to search for him. And uh, the coyotes might get him before you, you do. So, uh, you know, they, they restrict you to uh, the caliber, and then you have to use expanding ammunition, whether it be hollow point, soft point, power point, extreme points. The different, uh, cal the different makes of ammunition all have, some have plastic, some have lead, some have ballistic tip. You know, but they want you to use some kind of ammunition that when it hits, it's going to open up and expand. And what that does is it releases all of the energy that is in that bullet inside the animal. And it does the maximum amount of damage to the animal. That way the animal dies quickly and humanely. So it doesn't run off and die and suffer somewhere with a pencil sized hole through it. Um caliber restrictions ammo types um let's see what else what else do they uh I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what else they the different restrictions we talked about semi-automatics magazine capacity caliber restrictions ammo types um you know and and preparing for hunting um i think there's one or two states out west now that uh, cellular trail cameras are now illegal. Uh, oh, yeah, right, Russ? Suppressed and not suppressed, right? Can you use a suppressor to hunt with? There are some states that don't allow you, some states that do. I'm not sure uh, which ones don't. You'd have, again, you make sure you know if your uh, state allows that or not. So uh, a suppressor is nice, though, especially like for me, I hunt in a box blind. And a couple years ago, I was hunting with a buddy of mine and uh, we were hunting. He had a 450 Bushmaster and he racked one off at a doe that the gun, the, the barrel of the gun was just barely outside the window. And whoo, <laughs> that thing rattled the walls on that box blind. Holy mackerel. You don't want to do that twice. So uh, a suppressor would have helped in that instance, but just getting that gun outside the window probably would have helped more because all that sound had a muzzle break on it and all the sound went sideways inside the, in the uh, box blind. And uh, there was a 20 pound propane tank over here. We had the heater going and it moved the, it moved the propane tank. The concussion was so bad. It rocked the, uh, it rocked the propane tank. So, uh, 
you know, safety first, right? Always think about safety. Uh, we were talking about trail cameras. Um, couple states out west uh maybe it's arizona new mexico somewhere down southern uh southwest have outlawed cellular trail cameras for hunting um you can have them out before the season they have to come in once the season starts and uh you know their their reasoning there is that uh it could give the hunter an unfair advantage um you know, you set that you have a trail that you know deer, elk, or whatever are using consistently, and you set this up a hundred yards down, and it's taking pictures and sending them to you, and you know that the animals are on their way to you. So, uh, you know, it's uh, the animal's going to show up one way or the other, whether you know it's coming or not. It's still coming, so. They say it's an unfair advantage, and uh, you know some of the uh, uh, Pope and Young, uh, Boone and Crockett, they have restrictions on these. Even if you're, if you use one of these to uh, harvest an animal, there's restrictions on getting your animal in the record books. So, if you're interested in records, make sure you know bait or not bait. Right? Good, good point, Russ. Um, can you put out bait? Um, here in Ohio, we are allowed, uh, we use corn for the most part, um, apples, that kind of stuff, we are allowed to bait. Uh, you know, it's open for debate whether it uh, helps or not. Um, studies say it doesn't. Um, who knows? I, I, I seem to think it helps, right? <laughs> Uh, radios, right? Lighted reticles on your scopes. Um, are you, you know, here in Ohio, we're not allowed to use radios to talk about, <clears throat> we, uh, we do deer drives and, you know, you want to be safe when you're doing a deer drive. Um, so we use our radios to talk with each other as we're getting set up, you know, Hey, I'm in position. All the dry, all the sitters are in position. And then the drivers, Hey, drivers are moving. Right. And we, you know, Hey, we're, we're a hundred yards in, we're 200 yards in. We know if we're four or 500 yards apart, we know the guys are starting to get close. Uh, you know, as soon as somebody sees orange coming through the woods, they're on the radio. Hey, I got orange. That tells us the drivers are getting too close for us to now shoot. Um, so we use them for safety. Uh, you're not allowed to use them to say, hey, there's three deer coming towards you, right? You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to use them to help the other hunter gain an advantage in the harvest of the animal. And uh, the game wardens around here have been known to listen in on uh, the radio frequencies. And if they hear you doing that, they're going to come after you. <laughs> they're going to come out in the woods looking for you and see who's squawking on the radios. So, uh, you know, you gotta got to be careful and follow the rules. Uh, lighted reticles. Um, I'm not sure which states do or do not uh, allow lighted reticles. Um, I don't know of anybody that restricts red dots or that kind of stuff, at least not locally. Uh, and again, it, it all goes back to reading your uh, your rules and regulations book when you get your hunting license. And they're, they're online too. You can always download PDF uh, rules and regulations books right online. Um, I prefer it that way. I don't have, I'm not messing with the book, carry, trying to carry a book around. I can just look it up online. Most of them have a search function. You know, you type in lighted reticle and it's going to take you right to the section of the book that pertains to what it is you're looking for. Uh, they've made all those kind of things really user friendly nowadays. They don't want you to break the law just like you don't want to break the law. It seems like they, don't, they you know, you would hope they don't want you to break the law. <laughs> of course, it is a revenue stream. <laughs> Right, you do get fined. I got fined once many, many years ago for, uh, well, that's another story. <laughs> I was a kid doing something stupid I shouldn't have been doing. But, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to take a look at the hunting stuff um, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about uh, what you want in your backpack when you go hunting, right? What are the things uh, uh, that you want? Yeah, trespassing to recover animals, right? Here in Ohio, you're not allowed to trespass for any reason. And it absolutely stinks 
but you uh, you can go up to a you can have a deer run onto a guy's property and you can go up to that landowner and say hey i shot a deer over here on so and so's property and he ran onto your property can i go recover him and that landowner can tell you no he can tell you no and there's nothing you can do about it um, there are some states where you are allowed to. Um, there are some states where the uh, uh, game wardens will help you in that regard. But here in Ohio, there is no expectation that a landowner has to allow you on his property ret to retrieve uh, wounded game. And I have seen it happen. We had it happen to a young fella a couple years ago on a deer drive. He shot his first buck. It ran over onto the somebody else's property, and that property owner told him no. He could not go in there after that buck. And uh, we came to find out uh, a day or two later that that landowner had gone back and had taken that deer and kept it for himself. Kind of crappy, but, uh, you know, it comes full circle back to using the most powerful gun and ammunition that you're allowed to use and ensuring that you have good shot placement. Um, I have grown to, uh, over the years when I was young, I, I took some questionable shots and I've lost deer because I was excited and in the moment and, you know, thought, Hey, I, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get that deer. I gotta get that deer. Um, I don't shoot at running deer anymore. I don't take questionable shots. Um, I've tracked too many deer for too long of a distance and not recovered them. And it's a terrible feeling when that happens and I don't like it. Um, so I try to make sure it doesn't happen. I use the proper, uh, equipment to get the job done. And, uh, I wait for the right shot to make sure that I'm going to have the most, uh, the most opportunity, the most chance to recover that animal and that that animal is going to die quickly and humanely so that I can uh, recover them. You know, I've been using this 350 Legend for a couple of years now here in Ohio, and uh, and I used it down in Texas to hunt hogs a couple of years ago. Four hogs, one, two, three, four, five deer now, and the furthest a deer ran with this gun was about 20 or 30 yards. The rest of the, all the other three or four deer all did the DRT drop right there. I shot and they fell right where they stood. And, uh, the, uh, hogs was the same way. Uh, even with the neck shots, uh, if you got them up in the neck or the head, this bullet is big enough, strong enough, and uh, has enough expansion on it that it drops them. It drops them pretty good. So, can't say I can't really say enough good stuff about the 350 Legend. Nice flat shooting, uh, you know, 200 yard gun, which is all we're really going to shoot here in Ohio. Um, if you're out west and you're uh, you got a long way, you're hunting elk, you know, mountain top to mountain top, you're going to probably want something more in the lines of the AR-10, 308, 65 Creedmoor caliber, maybe something that's going to give you four, five, six, 800 yard distance and, uh, and still pack plenty of wallop. That's a big bullet and it's going to get the job done on that big game at a long distance. Uh, just wait until you can use more than a straight wall cartridge. No, hey, yeah. Oh, you, um, I think Levi, like, uh, I'm not sure if over where you live there around Pittsburgh that, um, there's some, spe there's some areas now that they've opened up for the straight wall cartridges. Uh, the, uh, what they call the special regs area where you were only allowed to use shotguns. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Don't quote me. So don't go out hunting with your 350 or your 450 just in case, but yeah, don't tell, don't tell the game warden. Jimmy said so. Uh, you look that up, but I thought I had heard that some of those special regs areas in Pennsylvania were going to open up the straight wall cartridges for, uh, deer hunting again, not in semi-automatic though, still. <laughs> okay. So, uh, anybody else got, uh, anything they can throw in for me? Uh, uh, 
Okay, that is correct, Russ. Yeah, I thought so. Um, yeah, Allegheny County around the Pittsburgh area where they typically have only allowed shotguns, you can now use the uh, straight wall cartridges. So it's uh, nice. Uh, you know, a lot of the sabots and stuff with the modern shotguns, uh, you get a shotgun that is designed just to shoot those sabots. You know, they have no problem reaching out to 200 yards. But uh, I just, I like, I like hunting with a rifle. I always have. So I'll shoot my 350 or my 450. I got a 450 single shot that I won at the uh, White Tails Unlimited banquet last year. Holy mackerel. What a, whew, that thing will wallop you. <laughs> there is no, nothing to mitigate recoil on that. Nothing. There's no buffer spring. There's no nothing. It's just a break open single shot, maybe four or five pound gun shooting a big womp and bullet and the first time i racked one off on that i was like whoa that thing has got a punch to it man <laughs> oh yeah you don't uh, you don't take a lot of practice shots with those that thing is uh is brutal i had it i had a hold of it and i leaned up against a tree and it came out of my hand and it cut my finger and it 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 got me pretty good because i wasn't holding on to it tight enough i wasn't expecting I wasn't I wasn't expecting that like when you shot that 460 Ruger down there in Alabama I was not expecting that much uh, uh that much muzzle rise out of that thing it, it it's got some punch so I'll stick with my uh ARs they got decent recoil mitigation with the buffering systems and everything that's in them you can tone them down with the gas. You can do a lot of stuff with these things to make them really nice for hunting. And you can make real nice lightweight. I mean, you know, there's something I can hold with two fingers, right? This thing weighs about five and a half, six pounds with optics. Yeah, and I went at, that's what I went after was a nice light gun, knowing that the recoil wasn't going to be bad. I didn't have to worry about that. And I wanted something that I could lug around in the woods all day and wasn't going to get heavy on me. So. Okay. So that's a quick overview of hunting as it uh, pertains to hunting with your AR. Diane Feinstein, Feinstein, whatever her name is, she can go pound salt. You can't hunt with your AR. <laughs> so uh join us next week uh we're going to take a look at what the the stuff you want in your backpack when you're getting ready to go out hunting the uh the stuff that i always have you know as it pertains to uh what i'm going to do whether i'm hunting all day or uh just for a few hours we'll kind of dictate that but there's always a few non-negotiables in there so uh, join me next week, and we'll talk about that stuff. Thanks. Remember, you don't have to build your, you don't have to be an expert to build your own AR to upgrade it or maintain it. We're here to help you do that. Thanks.